hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel and in today's video by popular demand i will introduce this royal giant ebuffs mother witch deck so you guys should have already figured out if you guys have been actively playing mother witch and ebuffs have been everywhere uh more so for ebuffs right ebuffs can fit into any deck whether it's the minor deck whether it's the hawk deck whether it's giant royal giant whatever you can put it anywhere it's a win condition on its own even in bridge spam so uh, today, uh, you guys can see here two different variations, one with E with the other one with Scale. So if you're facing a lot of uh, air kind of stuff, your Balloon, your Lava Hounds, I would recommend you run the E with, at least for the Balloon, because there is only a Mother Witch and a Fireball for air defense at this deck. But if you're not facing too many air uh, stuff, this one is good because it's a faster cycle. You have good cycle cards in your Skellies and your Heal Spirit, so it really allows you to outplay or outcycle your opponents. So without further ado, I will go to my first replay. See you guys there. First replay here, we are going against a Mortar Bats kind of a minor control deck. And you guys will also see that Ebops is everywhere, including in Mortar decks. So uh, first place with this deck, I like to cycle Mother Witch, Lock, Kill Spirit, anything. If you want to cycle, uh, of course, Skellies, you want to cycle your Fisherman, uh, you could do it in the back. Because there is no more uh, Giant Skelly bomb now. Even if they have a Giant Skelly, the bomb is not that great. So Fisherman in the back is pretty okay now. Probably the worst things you will meet is a Golem or E-Giant Bridge. So um, you go to the Fireball on the Mother Witch, that's really okay. We go with this fisherman and the heal spirit to take care of the bomber and, and we're fine right we take a fireball now we know he's running fireball so we just gotta be careful um, not to give him too much fireball on our mother witches so uh he's not back yet to his fireball so we can play the mother witch a little bit higher this will spawn me some hawks here and uh, get some damage so you guys can see he goes with his e buffs and we respond with e buffs of our own and then We'll probably uh, just lock this just to make sure we, we deal with everything here. And no, no worries. Just the bomber now, you can you can take the bomber damage because his damage is reduced. So if you don't really have the right cut to defend. So now he, he goes with a very good uh, minor bats combi because we do not have our Mother Witch in hand. But we do have our Skellies for kiting. So we kind of uh, saved ourselves there. But uh, yeah, his miner already got so much damage and we're already down by like 400 damage. But we know against Mortar, you gotta go with a big push with RG in the back usually. You gotta cycle RGs in the back. So over here, I made a slight mistake by not putting down the E-Spirit to kite that Mortar. So I guess it's just the old man's reaction, not reacting fast enough to place the E-Spirit. So I have to go with a Mother Witch. Even if he fireballs, that's fine. It's a 4 for 4 trade. Unfortunately, he does catch a little bit of the RG and I take a lot of Mortar hits here. So he goes with the bats, we want to go with the e-spirit on the bats, uh, heal spirit, not e-spirit. We miss out one, but we still do good damage, right? He doesn't have enough for his e-bops, so his e-bops come in a little bit late. Does retarget mine, but he takes a good amount of damage, and suddenly we are in the lead. So that heal spirit, not using that heal spirit in the end was actually good, because I managed to take out uh, 4 out of 5 of those bats, so kind of worked out for me. Over here, he's e uh get one swing, and then the fireball comes in on my tower again. So I decide to lock to not take the second hit from that e -bop. So we have to use the heal spirit here, and we'll probably still cycle in the back when we need to go with the RG. So we do cycle in the back again. The miner was not good for me because Fisherman was there to catch it and pull it. So he goes with the zap. That's not too bad. We probably just took the zap damage there, and that's gonna that's gonna pull his bomber over. Fireball comes in. Not really a big issue. So we go with Fireball on his motor because we want our RG to go straight in. So Heal Spirit here. So that is good actually. And uh, we do get one shot from the RG, so all good. We go with the E-Bubs protection here. If he decides to Fireball e -bops, we will then have a free Mother Witch. So he does Fireball those e -bops, and that the Bomber gets one shot on the tower, but again, not the biggest issue. So we get a counter push here with him not having his fireball so we go with the fireball here and very fortunately we do catch that spear goblins and then the e -bop got a shot on the tower so that is gg and i'll see you guys in the next replay okay uh next replay here we are gonna be meeting uh, against a very weird deck from caesar 57 he has a uh, let me blow your mind okay he has a pecker he has a building and his win condition is actually a royal giant. So how is our RG gonna break through Hecker and building with only Fireball, right? Fireball doesn't remove the Tesla. We are running lock. We have no bar barrel for distraction. So how are we gonna win this match? All right, well, of course, always at the start, we're cycling. Like I said, I'm comfortable um, cycling Fisherman in the back right now. 
Because he, uh, the first thing is he played archers. Archers are usually in cycle decks, and it's not really a big issue. They don't, they won't have like an e giant. Of course, we get weird decks all the time, but that's really um, not that likely. Okay, so now we see the packer, and uh, that's really not good for us. So the moment you see a packer, especially in single elixir, your main objective is not to do damage on his tower, is to make sure that he has no counter push. So that's what we're doing. We're going aggressive here. Unfortunately, our heal spirit gets logged. So we're going aggressive here just to make sure that I do not see that packer on my side health. So we, we're all good here. The packer is probably already dead. We still have to lock, I think. We do lock in the end, yeah. Uh, we probably didn't have to. The packer would have been dead. But then we still have to deal with the archer, so we do go with the lock. At this point, I have not seen his Royal Giant, so I wouldn't know that he's playing an RG deck. But um, in general, against uh, any decks with building, you still want to cycle in the back. So he has Pekka and building. So we'll probably need something like a double RG at the end. In double elixir or even triple to be able to break through. So we still go with the RG in the back. It goes with the Pekka. Because I don't have a better cycle. If I play any other troops, um, he, will just, he will just kill it and then counter push. So again, I believe we go with the same thing. We go with the E bumps behind. Now we know that he has a log. So we don't. I think we'll wait with the heal spirit for a bit. He goes with the fireball there, doesn't kill anything, so we go with the heal spirit immediately here, and we do heal up all our troops, and that is good, because there is no counter push. And he still has to, you guys see, he's over defending all this. Look at his elixir, look at mine, so we're all looking good here. And he already played his fireball, so we can again cycle the mother witch in the back if we want to. But no, we're gonna go with the RG, because we know we need double RGs now, and double elixir. So he goes with his Pekka. And then again, we'll, we'll go with the same thing. We'll go with the e bobs here. This time we decide to go with the split push because going in the same lane is not working. We are not getting any damage at all on his um, tower. Probably just spell damage with the log and all that. Fireball comes in. Fireball, we go with our own fireball to try to remove the Tesla. But no, this is when it might get a bit scary. Of course, I wouldn't know he's running a uh, Royal John yet. So we guys can see the Pekka comes in front, we go with the e buff directly on the RG. e buff could have probably been more to the left to actually um, do more damage to the RG itself. We have to go with the log to make sure that we do not take too many RG hits. So this is good there, we got some Skellies here, and then we get some Hawks on the tower. So this time he plays his Pekka first without seeing my Royal Giant, so that is good news for me because I can pull the Pekka to my side and then I just have to deal with the building. So it goes with the aggressive RG, we go with the Scalies to protect the fishermen, and we go with our with our E-Bubs directly on the RG. This time we go with the log also to make sure we do push it back. And you guys can see here E-Bubs right in front going for the tower. We go with the second RG, he already used this building, our RG is still so healthy. We go with the fisherman, pull it, and the Scalies here. He zaps the Scalies, but not the fisherman, so he doesn't retarget the fisherman. And two healthy RGs on the tower, that is GG, even if he tries to retarget with the building. No chance. So that's how you outcycle the Packer. I think his mistake was to play the Packer first uh, without seeing the RG, and then his cycle kind of got messed. And then he was really aggressive with all his Royal Giants, and we managed to get the counter push, and that, that was how you win it. I'll see you guys in the last replay. Last replay here against Smoker running the Ram Rider. I believe it's the Mega Knight variant, all right? So they have the Inferno Dragon. This deck actually does really badly against any form of Inferno especially Infernal Towers, because you have no reset for the Infernal Tower at all. No zap, no bar barrel distraction, uh, absolutely nothing. So against the Infernal Dragon, you have one reset, but that is the Fireball. That is also very... Uh, it's not really worth it. If you have to go RG Fireball against a 4 Elixir Infernal Dragon, probably you could only do it towards the end. If you do it too early, you lose, because it hits a 10 Elixir push for a 4 Elixir Infernal Dragon, and you probably still lose your RG really quickly after the retarget. So he goes with the Ram Rider here, we go with the Fisherman. So the only defense we have against the Ram Rider is actually a Log and the Fisherman. So we try to um, hit that, try to pull it. We wanted to hit it to pull it, but it's unfortunate it got uh, permanently stunned again. But uh, not, a, not a big issue here, we go Scallies and clean up. And we'll back uh, all set here. So he goes again, cycling uh, bandits in the back. We'll go with our fisherman and our heal spirit to have a small little counter push. We're not looking to attack. We already know uh, roughly what kind of a deck he's playing. So we are not really looking to be too offensive. Because he can get a nice counter push. So we're looking to defend and counter push. We go with the Mother Witch on the left because I don't want to take poison, any more poison uh, on the right side. So we go with the Scallies. We go with the Log, I believe, and then the fisherman again. So we cycle really fast. And we try to pull it back to the left side, so we can probably have a counter push here. 
So yeah, we, we do it. We go on the left, the Mother Witch gets one shot. We put the Heal Spirit here to protect and be able to pull the EU is over. So that is uh, important. If not, it's going to be permanently stunned again, like what happened on the right side. So we're constantly cycling in the left. Um, same as my previous uh, video. Once you take taken enough damage on the right, um, no reason to keep cycling into that lane. Unless you really want to defend the lane. But uh, playing on the left also forces him to play on the left. Play Elixir on the left because he has to defend. And we can take a counter push on the left. So again, same thing. We're using um, the... We're using the Fisherman and Hill Spirit on the Bandit. It's not ideal, but I don't really have any other ground troops. He can zap those. So we go aggressive because we have a we have a two uh, unit counter push here. So we go with the Fireball. Um, this one removes the Inferno as well as the e -wiz. So it wasn't just on the Inferno alone. If it was on the Inferno alone, I probably would not have Fireball. So here it looks like a very scary push with the Mega Knight Ram Rider. He goes with the Zap, we go with the e bops as well as the Log and the Heal Spirit. That is very important. Ram Rider still gets the charge in, unfortunately for us. But we do get a counter push of our own. So we go with the RG because we have a nice counter push here. He's gonna Mega Knight again. So we go with a second Fisherman I believe to pull it back. So we want to deal with the Mega Knight as quickly as we can. And that's one more RG here because the Mega Knight was not there. So we go with e bops all the way. Together with the Fisherman, Skellies to, to defend everything. And because he's only running Poison, we can do that. Because we have the Heal Spirit. Even if he decides to Poison the entire push, it's going to be too slow. And we can defend his Mega Knights, his Bandits, before they even get to the tower. So we go with uh, we go with the Mother Witch in the right side this time. Be I, he, even though he has Poison, there is um, no other play. Because he has already an Inferno there. And I this, this deck is really lacking air defense. So I have to do that. Fireball has to come in here to save us and luckily luckily we do defend with the e bobs having one hp it's going across the bridge with no counter push so we're looking good man we're looking good 1786 on my side just 904 on his side so again like i said we have no choice we have to play the mother witch and we are okay to take the poison damage at this point because our tower is still much healthier than his so i want to protect the mother witch so i go with the heal spirit to make sure the inferno doesn't directly lock on the mother witch so we guys see the mega knight is here he poisons everything I have no choice, I gotta take the poison, and then we go with our second fisherman, we go with our heal spirit, we go with the e-bops, and then probably the skellies as well, to try to defend this mega push from him. And we actually did it, we go with the RG counter push of our own, we have our fireball ready in case we need to fireball to reset, we do it, we didn't get the tower though, but we do get the reset, we have to lock here because yeah, he was gonna zap, and we do still manage to defend. We do spawn those hawks, which actually help out a lot. Because without those hawks, I think those uh, bandits and everything would go directly on my tower. So we go still get the fisherman pull. He goes with the zap. He nearly, nearly takes the tower. So over here, we know we gotta go at the bridge. And we probably could counter as well. Uh, we go with the fisherman to pull the Mega Knight over. He doesn't play his Ram Rider, so he doesn't manage to stop it. And then the Heal Spirit connects, and the RG takes the tower. What a way to end the video. Very, very close game. One more Ram Rider connection, one more extra poison, I would have lost. So I hope you guys like uh, the series and do not forget to try out this deck and let me know how you do in the comments below. But before you guys leave, um, before I leave you guys, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been getting a lot of love on my uh, channel recently. A couple of videos have hit more than 100 views. The one with Famous Kids EJ actually also hit 200 views. So I would like to thank all of you guys for all your support. But we are looking to continue to grow our YouTube channel. So do not forget to continue to support all those videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everyone.